Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives, and advocates from around the world to meet, network, and forge new scientific collaborations. Just to start with, uh, here we will speak about um, what is happening in the World Health Organization in terms of aging. Uh, to begin with, uh, the right to health is embedded into all major United Nations documents. Uh, so basically, uh, including world, the constitution of the World Health Organization, which is a uh, mandatory international treaties. And uh, in fact, the government, according to this constitution, governments have responsibility for the health of their people, uh, which can be fulfilled uh, by a provision of adequate health and social uh, measures. There are also provisions that governments um, develop by medical research and the World Health Organization has to uh, coordinate on it. So uh, to take it shortly, uh, governments already have to oblige in, a, in order to protect uh, the health of their people, uh, promote anti-aging research, we just have to <laughs> um, deliver this message to them. Recently, we have quite nice uh, switch from World Health Organization being uh, busy with predominantly infectious disease, as it was very important maybe a century ago. Now there is a quite big um, proportion of activities related to non-communicable disease. And of course, aging is a major part. I should say that we, uh, International Anxiety Alliance, uh, including many people here, uh, took part in um, improving a little bit one strategic document of the World Organization uh, called um, basically a, a strategy on healthy aging. Uh, I was lucky enough to be in the delegation together with Professor Nisimov and Viktor Zykov, uh, but uh, it, it was very important that there was serious uh, letter writing campaign uh, from the uh, activists uh, of our longevity community. And thank you Anton and other people for coordinating it. Uh, and uh, we sort of spumped <laughs> a bit World Health Organizations with 200 proposals. Uh, so we developed specific, um, specific wording uh, and it worked. There were significant uh, positive changes in this uh, initially very strange document. Uh, so they recognized negative uh, health impact of aging, which was not there before. They uh, introduced a whole big uh, section of promotion of an innovative, innovative research. Unfortunately, they do not say that specifically about this is biomedical research, but still they, there is a new section. Uh, and we are quite happy, but uh, of course this is only a small part of what has to be done. Uh, there is a discussion if aging is a disease. What is disease? Disease is a word. <laughs> this is just a word. And uh, ultimately, the meaning of the word often is discussed, decided in uh, legal laws, uh, legal acts. So at least uh, United States and Russia, Russia Federation, have definitions on disease. They are completely different, which means that there will be no unified definition of disease because it's just too much of problem to harmonize legislations. And if you read it carefully, uh, both definitions could include aging. There is nothing in the law which would not, uh, would uh, prohibit us, stop us from calling aging a disease. 
So uh, there is a list of diseases called International Classification of Disease. Right now there is 10th edition and it's being revised currently uh, into 11th edition. Uh, this 10th edition has senility, R44. Uh, nobody though uses it as much, but still it's there. So senility is already recognized as a disease. But uh, it would be very helpful to have aging, uh, maybe it's a syndrome complex, uh, introduced uh, specifically into ICD. It would be very helpful, first of all, for pharmaceutical companies, because that would be, and biomedical companies, it would be a huge incentive for them to develop um, new drugs, to invest into that. Uh, because they would be sure that they got reimbursed from whatever insurance uh, system a country has. Additionally, for example, in Russia, there is a specific decree uh, which says that uh, Russia works through this international classification of diseases. United States has its own classification of diseases, but it's different. So what are the inclusion criteria? They are there, actually. <laughs> two sets. Uh, first of all, you need, of course, human data, which is not all often there. Uh, it, there should be reproducible characteristic, diagnostic criteria, uh, some follow-up studies, family genetic studies. And uh, on the right, there is this column with the um, structure of uh, this web form for proposals. We, uh, together with Yuri, and uh, Anka Jovita from Romania, from Institute of Gerontology, uh, take this adventure, uh, take this enterprise, and we just uh, made the search in research literature, which uh, pathological processes of aging fit this uh, definition of disease. I should say, unfortunately, it's a huge amount of work, work, and no human being is really capable to keep it all in mind. Maybe Claudio, that's, that, but I mean, it's just too much information for uh, us, which descend from apes. But uh, more and more in recent literature, uh, the K perhaps uh, three processes, which are being at least uh, viewed by the researchers as uh, reasons for, uh, for many pathological processes of aging, are uh, inflammation, replicative cell senescence, which one of, is one of the sources of inflammation, and uh, that uh, decreased oxygen metabolism, decreased level of net, and so on. Uh, so this is our list, but I'm sure it's not complete, uh, uh, of diseases we find uh, that which are being caused uh, by inflammation, which inflammation plays a major role in. Regarding uh, this uh, decreased uh, consumption of op oxygens, there is data on decreased levels of net and decreased oxygen consumption by muscles, decreased VO2 max. Uh, and this seems to be this, a separate kind of process. Of course, it is interrelated, but a separate. Replicative cell senescence deserve to be um, called a separate disease because it, it occurs not, li, not only in the setting of normal uh, uh, aging, but also in some other conditions. And by uh, replicative cell senescence here, at least we mean uh, this uh, P16 positive cells, although of course new information about what cell senescence is, is coming. And there are of course other processes. So, uh, we definitely see uh, that uh, dystrophy and atrophy of bone marrow, which has uh, its uh, volume su substituted more and more by fat. Uh, uh, there is uh, aging-related prothrombotic blood changes. They are complex, but they are there. Uh, regarding um, immunity, so far, we only found really clinically relevant data on T cells, and for others there is still not enough information. Uh, that's strange that some pictures are not seen. I don't know. Maybe, uh, but anyway, uh, more than one process, one bad thing happens with T cells. 
there is a uh, decline in naive T cells number, there is decline in uh, uh, memory cells, uh, not decline, well, changes in the um, percentage of memory cells, helpers and healers, and so on. And generally, it, it, it leads to compromised T cell immunity, which correlates with mortality and so on. Uh, the reason, of course, one of the reasons is thymus atrophy, but I should say that according to recent data, thymopiasis, it still occurs even in old age, and certain cytokines could uh, inhibit or vice versa. It's possible to, to have thymopiasis in uh, old individuals, and it was done in mice, so thymus atrophy is not, I mean, not the only thing why this is happening. There is also Mm, other reasons and pathways. Uh, well, all these diseases of accumulations, they're uh, called uh, metabolic diseases in current ICD versions. There are amyloidosis, but hereditary ones. So we put them here. Of course, uh, there are uh, quite significant hormonal changes and why it's still debated whether it's good or, not, or bad. For example, that the levels of testosterone decline. Uh, we clearly see uh, changes uh, in body composition with declined lean mass and increased uh, fat mass. And this, of course, is not good. Um, and uh, yes, of course, decreased muscle, uh, muscle mass. Menopause, I heard one very prominent geriatrist telling that menopause, according to some women, he spoke to is very good, very, very happy with that. And that's like one of top star guys. Uh, it was in International Association of Gerontology Geriatrics Congress. But the menopause uh, does significant harm to the health of women. So is andropause. And of course, uh, one of the key aging mechanisms is uh, glucose internals, impaired glucose metabolism, and so on. There are pro-fibrotic metabolic changes, and now, uh, for example, I really like the work by Alex Javankov and his colleagues. Uh, there is new information on, on why, on what particular molecular uh, processes lead to fibrosis, and there are some common features uh, of uh, fibrotic process throughout the body. There are slightly common molecular signatures, so to say. Uh, so, yes. Uh, for mental disorder, the me only mental disorder is cognitive decline. So, I mean, who could really it, uh, call it a normal, normal process, normal aging? It is pathology, of course. If you talk, t talk about, uh, if you speak about nervous system, there is a number of uh, different clinically significant changes. Uh, perhaps the ma ma mo mo main one is uh, loss of... Um, neurons, but others are also quite important. And uh, they can be modified because right now there is more understanding than before what uh, mechanisms are behind them. And they all should be called diseases, of course. Uh, uh, heart remodeling, uh, blood vessel remodeling, blood vessel uh, calcification and blood pressure increase, not only within the setting of hyperton hypertonia, uh, partly they are already in ICD, but if we um, f shape it that way, we could start prevention at much younger ages, at much healthier level. Uh, dystrophies of respiratory system, there is very significant uh, decrease in lung size, like atrophy, fibrotic processes, and uh, they are really clinically significant. Uh, well, for dystrophies of digestive uh, system, uh, yes, of course, we have. Some of them are already in ICD, for example, like chronic passive congestions of the liver. Uh, dystrophies of skin, uh, here we put, uh, it's, it's hard to actually distinguish between processes of skin aging, but we definitely uh, have skin atrophy and dystrophy, male alopecia and hair discoloration. Some people say, including my own co-office, that uh, oh, who cares about uh, hair discoloration, but pathology is pathology. Let's just list it here. Uh, of course, uh, there are also dystrophies of mus musculoskeletal systems like bone mass decline, muscle mass decline, osteoporosis, yes, it is considered a disease, but for example, muscle 
uh, must decline not, to, much, not much. And uh, dystrophies of Gini turinary system. Uh, there are two things are happening with kidney. One of uh, uh, atherosclerosis together with hypertension, one of just cell senescence of uh, uh, endothelial ce cells and kidney. There is also progressive bladder hyperactivity and from, uh, from like um, cytokine there it looks at just uh, not um, only ischemia and stuff like that but also it is neuroaging <laughs> partly. And benign prostate hyperplasia and uh, finally sexual <laughs> Uh, sexual health was also suffering. Again, some people say, oh, who cares about sex? We are intellectual people, but <laughs> <laughs> dystrophy is a dystrophy. Uh, and uh, viewing it within, throughout, um, broader system could just really help um, to, to treat this um, particular uh, special specific processes. Uh, so, so far, uh, it just, um, it just uh, looks like uh, aging is more like a syndrome because some of these processes have different mechanisms than others. And they can be more pronounced in some people uh, than others. But we are totally sure that uh, it, sh it, it should have place in ICD-11. Again, unfortunately, this is a lot of work. So please, everybody who would be interested uh, to work on documents in uh, research literature. Please join us, we would be happy. Um, we have very little time to introduce it into ICD-11 and I'm totally sure that all of them we will not succeed. I just hope that maybe if uh, Claudio helps that we could, for example, introduce inflammation at least. Uh, but uh, whenever this work will be finished, we could just call for a really supplementary um, document uh, to, a to this ICD. Uh, and we need a broad consensus, uh, not only within research, but also within the medical community, which is extremely important uh, st stakeholder in this area. <laughs> However, all these processes, who would really be able to tell that they're normal, age, normal and healthy aging. <laughs> Thank you. So we may not care about sex, but I guess we care about lunch. However, <laughs> somebody hasn't asked a question before. Well, we have only one person willing, okay, maybe. Then. Claudio could ask the question. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. Uh, I will be delighted to contribute. Uh, send an email because uh, I am becoming demented. And uh, uh, I would like to stress that uh, as far as I uh, pick up from your presentation, for example, the gut microbiota is totally ignored and can, can be a topic that is uh, emerging so strong that uh, uh, m many of the diseases that you mentioned, uh, this can be play a role, but uh, probably it needs a more focused uh, point. Uh, so just to, to something that came to my mind at a glance, looking at a glance uh, to, your, uh, to your presentation. So there is a lot of work to, to yes. To, to improve, uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Claudio, thank you so much. To tell the truth, we were just so exhausted with <laughs> the whole thing. We did it uh, for half a year, uh, all day, every day, all through, and we just didn't uh, get uh, um, enough attention to uh, digestive system aging. I totally agree with you, and we would be really happy to integrate uh, whatever. And also criticism, Not we are not uh, quite sure because it, we're just starting to present it. In the it's not a criticism, it's, uh, <laughs> yes. I, it's, uh, I would like to, to contribute. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um. Okay, very quickly from Edward, then I guess we should really mm. So here you have an email uh, in front of you. Um, I suggest perhaps that we try to put every medical doctor, every research institution who might be interested on board because what we need uh, is uh, perhaps not to be perfect in terms of science, that's ideal, but because of the lack of time we need to be many to make this happen 
And even if we don't succeed in having it accepted in ICD-11, at least I think it's the big uh, paradigm shift that we are intru introducing to the right persons. Uh, so uh, I think it's now, uh, it's part of the whole process we've been describing these last days. Uh, we are at the heart of the right persons to change the, the minds. Well, Sinai, uh, Sarkopini was recently included in C into a CD10, uh, with, not within the setting of revision process, it was just added, so it's possible even if... But sorry, it's not causality, it's, it's, huh? it's called age-related physical ability. Oh, we have two ICDs, one is uh, United Nations, but United States uh, decided to develop its own uh, version, so this is American version and senility is everybody sells version. <laughs> so this uh, is the secret. <laughs> so isn't there a risk that you, by introducing certain parameters, not others, you mm -hmm. are limiting the scope and therefore making it more difficult for people to actually develop age-related treatments because it's not involved in the, in the ICT? That's a good question, how to um, make it, uh, give a lot of options to uh, drug developers and we have to think of this. Maybe we should uh, make some of um, processes broader and some narrow. I think maybe we should unite as much as possible into um, uh, like complex uh, diseases or syndromes. Uh, so we have to take this risk into account. Okay, well, many thanks to the speakers. Let's, uh...